while investing in Alibaba has felt like taking the midnight train going anywhere, uh, the exact opposite is true. Since the moment we put the first dollar to work in this asset, we knew that the sum of the parts valuation was multiples of the whole. Every negative headline and exogenous event simply created the opportunity for us to increase our ownership percentage in the business and for management to buy shares in or to buy back shares to increase our ownership in the business. Every time they buy back shares, our percentage of ownership goes up. Nothing has changed about the underlying business. And if anything, prospects have grown a lot brighter. We never stop believing. And by the way, management in the context of this new announcement announced that they remain committed to their massive buyback, which is another benefit we're going to see going forward besides the multiple expansion, besides the value unlock with the six different divisions, the IPOs, the spins, etc. On Tuesday, management made our life a little easier by beginning the process to unlock value for owners on an accelerated pace when they announced this. Uh, Alibaba Group will reorganize to six business groups and other investments, a move designed to, quote, unlock share shareholder value and foster market competitiveness. This, the move marks the most significant government's overhaul in the platform's uh, company's 24-year history and positions Alibaba's businesses to capture market opportunities and further stimulate growth. Uh, yesterday, I listened to the call with investors. It was at 8 this morning in Hong Kong, 8 last night here. And they said, besides the accountability and the individual board of directors, we want uh, these businesses to become more agile, more competitive, more entrepreneurial, more accountable. We want managers to have ownership in their businesses so they're incentivized to drive fast growth and not part of the kind of this, uh, this is now my editorialization, this socialism where the good units finance the bad units, but the, the bad units get a higher multiple than they're entitled to and the good units get a much lower multiple than they're entitled to, and it brings the good down, and it brings the bad up, and the net effect is a utility-style multiple when it should have a high growth multiple for some of these massive units like the cloud uh, and others. So we're going to start to see that. The six units will be Cloud Intelligence Group, which includes AI. You can imagine the multiple that thing is going to start to receive. I think this thing, once, once the game comes back on, could be at 40, 50 times. Uh, certainly, it'll probably be, I think, you know, initially three to five times sales, and then it'll expand once the game gets going and, and uh, rates continue to come down and the dollar continues to weaken. That'll be back at the normal game on multiple for the for these type of businesses of 10 times sales. And those sales are going to expand from 10 to 30 billion, as we covered with Kristen and Rochelle. And, uh, and you can do the math on that. That's a $300 billion business. And by the way, you get the five other units for free <laughs> with the T-Bow and T-Mall being orders of multiple uh, magnitude more valuable, which is pretty exciting at the moment. Uh, then you got the T-Bow, T-Mall commerce group, local services group, the Kynow Smart Logistics, which is going public for 20 billion, uh, the global digital commerce group, the and the uh, which is uh, growing extremely fast. That has a huge uh, Lazada, etc. Um, um, what's the other one called? Uh, AliExpress and others. Digital media and entertainment group. Zhang is going to stay with um, at the holding company and also the cloud intelligence group. So you know. You know, it's just like Larry Culp at GE. They always stay with the most valuable uh, parts of the business. Culp stayed with aviation. He understands the runway, no pun, in, well, pun intended, uh, for that business over the next five years, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So Goldman Sachs noted, Alibaba is trading at one of the steepest discounts to net asset value globally among holding companies, and the investment bank expected the restructuring to help close that gap. Well, closing that gap is another 200% up. Uh, in our view. So as we've stated on previous podcast video casts, when the fundamentals don't make sense in the short term or are taking time to catch up, we can look at the technicals to point to our next targets. In the case of Alibaba, we stated that the first target from here would be the $160 to $180 range, and it was likely no one, no one would be let in on the way up. Why? Because everyone bought in at $120 after the first 100% move off the fall lows and got flushed back to $80. There will be no belief on the way up this time and the same chorus will sing, quote, communists, Taiwan, World War III is coming, et cetera, et cetera. The headlines are designed to separate weak-handed holders from their ownership in the company and transfer it to people like us who gladly scoop it up when others mistake the noise of the day for the fundamental intrinsic normalized earning power 
and moat of the business. So as we continue to say, borrowed from Michael Burry, quote, meet the new boss, same as the old boss, referring to Xi Jinping. If you invest based on politics, you will always lose. Many Republicans sold their portfolios at the 2009 lows because Obama was elected president. The bull market began and continued to run. Democrats sold their positions after Trump was elected. They missed a monster two-year rally led by tax cuts. Weak-handed Alibaba shareholders puked in the hole in the fall because somehow they thought COVID or wrong-minded policies would last forever. At the end of the day, quality businesses, those with a history of compounding invested capital at rates above their cost of capital and above the market returns, come out of these crises stronger and with more market share than they came in. And that's a key thing. Let me repeat that. Quality businesses, those with a history of compounding invested capital at rates above their cost of capital and above market returns, come out of crises stronger and with more market share than they came in. This time will be no different. It reminds me of the beginning of COVID when a reporter asked then President Trump, quote, but what will happen to all the restaurants, President Trump? To which Trump replied with a straight face, don't worry, honey, they'll still be there. They may have different owners, but they'll still be there. <laughs> the same is true for Alibaba. Weak holders out, strong holders in. Since we've covered the fundamentals many times over, here are our first technical targets, which mean, which are miles away from our final targets. $160 is on the basis of filling a technical gap. $180 is on the basis of a, quote, measured move from the inverse head and shoulders pattern. How useful do I think these technical targets are? Not very, but it gives us something to talk about while time arbitrage ultimately takes us up to fair value. But let's just take a look at the fancy lines for a second here. So this is your inverse head and shoulders. There's a shoulder, shoulder, head. There's the neckline. Uh, if you uh, inverted it, you would see a shoulder, head, shoulder, etc. Same type pattern. And the measured move is basically from 58 to 121. That's $63. You add that to 121, it takes you up to about 184 and change. Uh, so that's one target. You can see a lot of overhead supply right around that range. And you see this gap here to fill at 160. Uh, and people think these things matter a lot. Sometimes they do. A lot of times they don't. But it's just areas to keep a line, uh, an eye on. I think this overhead supply is probably the most important thing. Why is that uh, useful is because, um, uh, let's see if I, I thought I explained that below. That's useful because you're, that's going to be the next spot where the, where the rally is going to stall and people are going to lose faith and it'll check back 20 or 30 points to take out more weak hands that you know, buy in at 180, get flushed down to 160, or buy in at 160, get flushed down to 140 before the final move up. So uh, this, an this analysis is slightly better than useless, but <laughs> I would pay attention to the short-term overhead supply between 160 and 180. This is where everyone will think the move is over because it will stall and pull back for months before making the long-term move back to fair value. While technical analysis is a tool, it is not the answer. It is simply a guide to understand where you might be in the process. We find sentiment and positioning slightly more useful. In this case, the technicals are lining up perfectly with a standard emotional process cycle by Justin Mammoth. I think he wrote a book like 40 years ago. We've covered this chart many times in past podcasts, but you can see here with the inverse head and shoulders, you got shoulder, head, shoulder. Well, he just names it differently. Panic is the first shoulder. Discouragement is the head. Then you climb up. This is where everyone bought right at anxiety at 120. You can see it here. Then it flipped back. Everyone was aversion, getting all these questions of the week about Alibaba. What do you think now? The same thing I thought before. <laughs> the business is cheap. We want to buy more. That's what we think. Uh, why? Has, has something changed about the business that you know of that the market is not aware of? Please, please uh, identify. No, the price is down. Well, I'm not worried about the price. I'm worried about the value. The price will ultimately catch up to the value over time. And now we have a catalyst to move it sooner rather than later, which affects our IRRs, which is the return measured over time, which is actually very important because you can have a triple over 10 years. That's not a really impressive IRR. You have a triple over five years. That's a, that's a, very, that's a very helpful IRR and a, and, a, and a nice contributor. And if you can do it over two to three years, it's even better. So I think this is exactly where we are in the cycle. We've just come off a version at $80 and now we're working our way back up. We'll hit some resistance around uh, 120 
that's where people will deny it. And that's when we rip up to this 160 to 180, which is going to be the next area of uh, mental effery, so to speak. So keep in mind that the success of the Alibaba emerging markets trade working is predicated on the weakening of the dollar. We continue to get cooperation on this front. The stock has been cooperating since October when the dollar peaked. Here's when the dollar peaked. That's when uh, Alibaba bottomed. You can see there's no, co you know, there's no accident that those two uh, coincide. And you can see the US dollar broke the trend, tried to retake it and collapsed once again. The same thing with the 10-year yield cooperating.